Hi, this is Cynthia Rothrock. Thank you for tuning in to my YouTube channel. With me today is Robert Clancy, the host of Mindset Reset Show. And we are going to answer some of the questions that you have written in and wanted to know the answers. Yes, so there's uh, some great questions again that have come in. So, you know, we really appreciate the uh, fans posting these out there. And this one is a good one because I actually have this question too. It's from Dieter Bastian. And he said, somebody better get to making a Cynthia Rothrock movie Blu-ray box set with behind the scenes commentary from you like you've been doing on your YouTube channel. And uh, his question is, would you like to see this box set come out? And what are the hurdles to accomplishing this? Uh, yes, I would. You know, I'm a funny person. I really don't have any of my DVDs because I watch them once and then I don't watch them again. I don't particularly like to look at myself on screen. Um, but if it's like a like a midnight showing and a premiere, then, then, I, then I do. I like it at that time. One time and that's it. But I think a lot of people would love to see a box office set. I think the difficulty behind that is that all the movies I've done have been different movie companies, you know, maybe two movies with one company. So I think it'd be very hard because they would have to say, okay, well, who gets the revenue? It wouldn't be me getting the revenue, but it'd be the companies that own the film. And they'd have to divide it into so many. Uh, so I think maybe the most you would get in a box office that would be from Golden Harvest. They would have like China O'Brien 1 and 2, Lady Reporter and Writing Wrong. So uh, it would be a four set. Other than that, all the other companies are different. So I don't know, I don't know if we'll ever see the box office set. Well, I'm, I know that there are other hurdles too because the catalogs keep getting sold and then there's some that have been shelved or they're out of print and it's just hard to uh, track all those down. I know I've, I've been looking for <laughs> several of them out there to... Uh, yeah, it's hard because uh, Golden Harvest closed their company, and then it got sold some of their stuff to another Asian company. Then it got sold to Warner Brothers. You know, we were actually trying to look for who owns the rights to China O'Brien because uh, Greg Robbins and I want to redo like another one, like the what happened after all these years. But we're having a very hard time finding who owns it because they transitioned to so many different libraries, and most of these companies just put all the older films like somewhere in a safe and they don't even know what they have and they don't want to go and look at them but they just own all this all these libraries right. so we're still trying <laughs> well I, I love this question from lorraine butcher and it's uh because it's actually who's the favorite female that you fought with in uh and who would you like to work with again well uh i haven't fought that many females. I guess the one that comes to mind is Karen Shepard because we've had some really good fight scenes in uh, the film Writing Wrongs. So I also fought with uh, the late, great Cheryl Wheeler, uh, who was one of the top stunt people and one of my friends. So it was really awesome to fight her. And, uh, you know, I, I think most of the time, they hit me up with a man, uh, but to me, it doesn't matter as long as the person is tough, can take a hit, can give a hit, and can react, you know. Uh, so that's how I grew up with in the Hong Kong industry is getting hit hard and fighting hard, and uh, that, I think, to me, makes a very good combination. When you get someone that doesn't fight so hard or, they, you know, they don't give it, it your, their all, it's a little bit mismatched. So it doesn't matter, male or female, as long as they're really tough fighters. Yeah, excellent. Uh, you know, and I know um, you do that really amazing split <laughs> in, in uh, writing wrongs. Like, uh, you know, on that one. Yeah, that was, that was a great move. It was pretty, pretty hard. Like, I was <laughs> fighting Karen, and she was on the ground, and I, I do a split on top of her, and she blocks my foot, and then I drop with my knee on top of her. Uh, I was actually on a wire holding me up because there's no way Karen would be able to hold me up uh, with, with her hands like that. But you had to have 100% centered balance because you would fly off. So it, it's a, it was really strenuous and strong on your legs trying to keep that balance on the split. Come down, hit in the knee, and still keep your balance. Well, it was that's kind one of that, that defense... Uh... Yeah, they should definitely check that one out. If you want to see a good fight scene with uh, you fighting a female, Daddy, <laughs> that's one more yeah, good fight scene. Yeah. Uh, next question was from Brian Alt. He said, you've been a great role model and a person that he definitely looks up to. Uh, what do you think makes you a great role model? 
Well, uh, you know, one of the nicest things someone ever said to me, a producer said, I want to do a movie with you because I want you to be a role model for my daughter. And I think, uh, you know, it's probably one of the nicest compliments someone can give you. And I think because it shows that women uh, can defend themselves, they can be tough, they can be strong, they can still be feminine. And uh, it's just a lot of dedication, a lot of hard work. And whether you're a role model for a martial artist or a non-martial artist, I think it's just that you don't give up, you stay positive, and you work your butt off to be the best that you can be, no matter what you're trying to accomplish. Well, one of the best moments I saw with you in person was when this little girl, she had to be about three years old, wearing a little martial arts uniform, and you got down to her level, and you were kind of in her face sparring with her a little bit, and that was, uh, and she was just in awe. She was like, oh. <laughs> I, yeah, I love teaching little kids, you know. It's so fun. I was in uh, the Ukraine, and I taught 200 children at one time. I couldn't believe, like, the massive amount of kids, but they had so much energy, and at first they don't know who you are, right? Because they're like five, six, but when they're done, you are their hero, you're their biggest fan because you taught them and you gave them attention and you smiled and you uh, you motivated them to continue to train. It's like one of the best feelings in the world. Uh, another question uh, came in from Jeremy Briggs. He said, do you still keep in touch with Michelle Yao? Uh, that's, uh, you co-starred with her in your first film, Yes, Madam. Unfortunately, no. Uh, we were really, really good friends uh, shooting shooting the movie, but for some reason, you know, sometimes you lose contact with people. Uh, you know, some people become friends for life. Uh, unfortunately, we did not, but I've been following her career, and uh, she is like an amazing woman, and I hope someday to run into her again so we could talk about the good old days, how <laughs> we got almost beat to death and almost killed herself in the film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you have that great scene where you do the, the hand uh, <laughs> before you fight, so that people will know that one. That's used a lot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I think Yes, Madam is probably the best woman partner film ever made. I really do. The fights uh, in it are phenomenal. And uh, next question is from Andrew Waits. He said, do you do yoga, Pilates, or weight training to stay in shape? I do. Uh, I've done a little of Pilates, not so much. I do a lot of yoga. Actually, today I just came back from hot yoga class, my first class after four months of being quarantined. Kicked my butt. <laughs> it's really hard uh, working out in like 106 degree heat, but uh, I really do like it because to me it's a form of uh, detoxification um, because I sweat so much. And I've always liked yoga. I've always done yoga because uh, it's very good for your mind and also for flexibility. Uh, weight training, I have my periods on and off. I love it. I don't do it. I actually prefer cardio. I like doing fast-paced stuff like more uh, exercise classes, working on a treadmill, going out hiking. Uh, but I do get in the season of saying, you know, weight training is really good for you. Like I'm at now, I am using weights now and doing it. Uh, I just, I guess, I just, for me, I like the faster paced energy type of workouts, but, uh, I, I, I do appreciate the benefits of it. And, you know, I'm in the, I like doing the weight mood right now. <laughs> Another question that came in from uh, the YouTube channel is, uh, can you tell us how you first got into martial arts and who or what inspired you? Uh, and actually, uh, also, what style did you learn first? Well, um, I started martial arts when I was very young, and my girlfriend's parents were studying it, and they owned a health club. On Sunday, the health club was closed, and my friend and I would go and uh, we'd go in the exercise room while they were cleaning out all the equipment and we'd be doing flips and cartwheels and just doing a whole bunch of fun stuff in a big empty room. And then when they got done cleaning, they would come in, put their karate uniforms on, and they were studying Tung Su Tung at the Scranton Karate School. And I would watch them and I was like, wow, what is that? I never even knew what martial arts were. I never saw it before. And I was like, those belts are pretty cool. I like that uniform. And since I was kind of an always, always a funny kid, I always liked to try, and I still am today, the, the not the norm. If it's something unusual, unique, that's what I would go to. 
And uh, I thought, how cool is that to be able to learn how to use your hands and feet to protect yourself? So that's what got me started, um, started at the Scranton Karate School. And uh, to this day, I've never stopped uh, practicing martial arts. Awesome. And uh, Colin Tronica, now that's their handle on YouTube, said they're looking forward to watching your new biography. Uh, that's the one um, by the Martial Arts History Museum. And it's also available on your website and you'll sign it for people. Uh, but he's curious about how um, you train your mindset. What type of thinking do you do that cultivates uh, you to accomplish so much? You know, when I was young and I started martial arts, I didn't really like it. I wanted to quit after my third class. I was the only girl in a classroom full of men. Uh, I couldn't get the movements down. It was very hard. Uh, and my mom wouldn't let me quit. She said, no, you studied for, I paid for four months. You have to go for four months. And then one day my teacher was given a talk and he was given a talk about if you quit, you're a loser, that losers are, are not winners. And I thought he was speaking directly to me because that's exactly what I had as a bad attitude. And I said, you know what? I don't, I, I don't practice. I want to quit, I have a bad attitude, let me change it around. So I started practicing and I started to get good at it. And that lesson uh, to me taught me to never give up on anything. And I think I used that mindset, you know, that no matter what you do, you can always be better. Even when I was competing and I was undefeated like over 150 times, uh, I still would train harder and harder after every competition that I won. And the reason for that is, is, is because you know someone could be, beat you. Someone could be better out there. So I think don't get discouraged if it's a little bit hard and you can't do it because that's what I did in the past. So I think that's a, a, a good mindset training is to always do the best, uh, no matter what your best is, but try your best at anything you do. Yes, yeah, great, great advice. That's my mindset. <laughs> Compete against yourself, and that's really the best way to get better. And then, yeah, yeah, I think so. It's not really competing, but it's it's just like don't cheat because we can all cheat at things, you know. And I like the phrase, you know, don't give a hundred percent, give a hundred and ten percent in everything that you do. Excellent. Uh, this question's from Alex Freeman. He's been waiting very patiently to find out why your hair got longer and shorter in female reporter and the blonde theory. <laughs> Yeah, actually, that's very funny. Uh, there really wasn't a continuity person on set, as you can see. Uh, the reason for that is uh, I I was shooting shooting it. Mong Hoi was directing it, and when they finished, it came. It was just so good that uh, Golden Harvest wanted to bring in Yu Kuei to shoot some more scenes, um, and I was already shooting China O'Brien at the time. And I said, but my hair is different, you know, I, and, and they're like, that's okay. We don't care. Nobody's going to know this. So that was their attitude. So one time I was doing a, a premiere of the movie in uh, England and they gave whistles to everybody. And they're like, every time you see a continuity where Cynthia goes in with her hair like this and comes out with it like this, blow the whistles. So, you know, everybody was like blowing whistles. It was really, they made a fun event of it. But that's the reason you see different looks is because I was brought back after to add more scenes to it because they were like, oh, we have something better here than what we even expected. Yeah, and some of the scenes, as, as you've said in the past, take sometimes a month to shoot and then uh, just to get that, that piece right. And then if you were away for a couple months and come back and then you're, you're adding on to that scene, uh, it's not just like one take and it's done. Uh, so that, that well, well, it was crazy because when I started it, and I had a perm and my hair was a little darker. And by the time I finished and I shot China O'Brien, I put more blonde in my hair, so my hair was blonder and it was straighter because the perm left. So <laughs> <laughs> looked much better the second time around, I can say. <laughs> All right. Well, the next question is from Jr. He said somebody posted a video on YouTube, probably some of the clips of, of some scenes from your movies, and I know two of. Them. Two of these, I, I believe. One is uh, uh, the Blonde Fury, and there's another one. In, I think writing or writing wrongs me, but um, where you run up the wall <laughs> in high heels, and you not not only run up, you run up and around the wall, and then jump off the wall. He said it looked real. I don't know if it was. 
But that yeah. alone must have been very hard to do. <laughs> Yeah, that was in uh, a bl uh, Blonde Fury uh, yeah. or Lady Reporter. They Lady Reporter, movies. yes, that in the in the airport, the airport scene. Yeah, and uh, that uh, Mom Boyd wanted me to shoot some scenes in heels because he said I never, uh, you know, saw a woman fight in heels like fight that um, um, complicated of fight moves. So, uh, yes, I did do that. It took a lot of takes. Uh, at first, I was afraid to do it. You know, I had the dress on, I had the heels on, but it all worked out. And actually, when I was doing it, I was thinking, oh, this is going to look like crap. But, you know, sometimes what you feel and what they see is a different thing on film. So it actually worked quite well. But it was, was one of the more difficult things I had to do. Yeah, and it's important to note that you were not on a wire and that was not CGI. You actually did run up the wall on yeah. heels. Uh, in the Matrix, they did probably CGI. You actually did it, which is pretty scary. Well, during all those films, uh, it, actually even today, I have never done anything that has CGI. It's all been real. Well, good point. So there, you know, JR, it's real. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> don't 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 make her angry. <laughs> All right, another question um, came in is uh, uh, from Neil uh, Stanley. He said, uh, "Can you use nunchucks like Bruce Lee and enter the dragon?" And he wants to know if you can, because uh, you were talking about weapons in the previous. Uh, you had the hook swords, and uh, I know I've seen you use uh, bow staff. Uh, you used the chain. You used uh, everything from mop handle to <laughs> everything. But yeah. uh, what's what's your status on nunchucks? Well, actually, you know, I I am mostly a Chinese stylist uh, with weapons. I know most of the Chinese weapons. Uh, the nunchaku is, is like Okinawan, but whatever weapon you learn, if you're learning the double swords or you're learning any double weapon, all that movement is the same. Whether you have nunchucks in your hands or you have like a sword that's coming around, it's pretty much the same movement. So if you could do one you'll be easier to do the other and one thing i've learned in hong kong is that especially from jackie chan is that you could take anything like in some of the movies i took my purse and used it as a steel whip that as long as you know that one basic movement it's the same spins in probably almost every weapon uh that you see someone like spinning it around yeah. uh two more questions and we'll wrap up uh, real quick finbar white wants to know do you do drawing or painting Oh, that's a funny question. <laughs> but, um, yes, I do. Uh, I did a lot. I actually went to Boston University as an art major. And uh, I came back because I realized I really wanted to teach martial arts. I didn't want to be an art teacher. So I quit BU and came back and opened up a martial arts school, which to my parents' dismay, they were like, no, my God, what are you doing? But now they're happy that I followed my martial art path and not yes, my Yes, I think the rest of the path. world is too. <laughs> and last question's from Alex Freeman. He said, uh, who's the best fighter, you or Richard Norton? And I think we'll we'll see this in an upcoming uh, interview. You guys are going to have a little chat about this, so maybe you guys can duke it out on there, but uh, that's coming up. And he also said, Honor, Rage and Honor is your best U.S. movie. Uh, I am. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. See? No, Plain and simple. If you ask Richard, he'll say Richard. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what. Richard Norton is a phenomenal martial artist. We've done probably at least eight or more movies together. And the reason is, is because he's so good. He fights so strong. He doesn't hold back. Sometimes I'll fight with people. They don't want to hit me hard. Well, Richard has no qualms about hitting me hard. Uh, so uh, he is amazing at what he does. Uh, he's he's a master. Uh, he does a lot of jujitsu. I probably could beat him in the kicking department, and he could beat me in the uh, trapping jujitsu department. <laughs> <laughs> well, you might have some tricks up your sleeve because I think you work them enough that you can figure those things out. You actually uh, in Magic Crystal, you catch him in the in the face with a, a sword or something. I know. Yeah, <laughs> I tagged him. I, uh, we were fighting about eighteen hours on set without a break. We were really tired. And we were doing weapon scenes, and uh, I sliced, and he didn't duck, and boom! Now he's got—he had about 13 stitches across his eyebrow. So he's got a a, a memento from that film. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, then you can one you can one up yourself on that. You, you beat him pretty good in that one. <laughs> now he got me back many times. That's for sure. <laughs> All right. Well, it's always a pleasure to have you on and answering these questions for your channel. And uh, really encourage the fans to keep posting these. We love uh, going through these, and especially the interesting ones. So, uh, like Finbar, you know, you like drawing or painting. It keeps it. Yeah. <laughs> mix well, it up. <laughs> every once in, well, let's see. I haven't actually. I haven't drawn anything in a while. Um, when I had my daughter, when I was pregnant, I started doing art classes again, doing uh, watercolors and oil painting, and that was fun. Just so you know, there's just not enough time to do everything, but uh, it's something I, I, just, I really would love to do, and I should do something for the heck of it one of these days. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning into my YouTube channel. Like I mentioned, the Martial Art History Museum has put out a biography on me. You can get it on my website, CynthiaRolfRock.com. Uh, he did a great job of starting when I was young until today. Uh, so if you get a chance, check it out. Uh, some of the proceeds go to support the Martial Art History Museum. So that's CynthiaRolfRock.com. So thanks again, everybody. God bless, and we will see you next week. Hi, this is Cynthia Rothrock. Thank you for watching my YouTube channel. And if you like the videos, please put a like on it and refer it to your friends.